all I, all I wanted was a hundred million dollars and a bad chick. Imagine this a Muslim nice and felt like that I had it. Back on the mattress, staring at the ceiling. Tracking what's good my ninjas hey today i got something to get off my chest and i'm just gonna say i've been holding it back so here i go um i'm about to explain the real reason why i i didn't come to houston for so long so the three month i think it was like three months three and a half months why i didn't go back uh i'm about to tell you so as some of you might know uh as some of you might already know like what what I got in trouble for but for the people that don't I'm about to explain it in this video right now but before I get started make sure you smash the subscribe button like button and make sure you leave a comment down below because feedback is key and make sure you let let me know what videos you want me to do or what pranks you want me to do what reactions anything anything down below right here so December 16th is when I came back to Fort Wayne, Indiana. That was when I was visiting my family. So I visited, I, so the whole plan was to visit my family for the holidays, the Christmas, for Christmas. And so December 23rd is when uh, I think I visited my dad. And then later on, I came back to Fort Wayne to visit my, you know, my mom's side. So, one night, I'm with my friend. I'm not going to name any names. So, I was with one of my friends, or with a couple of my friends. No, with one of my friends. And we're driving in the car, and I have weed on me. So, I have weed on me, and we're driving. He's in the front seat and I'm in the passenger seat. So he's driving and he doesn't turn on his turn signal. And what we don't know is the cop is right behind us. So the cop is right behind us and he didn't turn on his turn signal. He's driving and then the cop flashes his lights. So of course, you know, things are running through my mind like, man, like, well, I have weed on me. Um, this isn't going to end good. And, uh, yeah, I was just like, well, this sucks. So, being stupid, uh, I shove it down my pants. Um, so he comes to the, you know, the door and he's like, you know why I pulled you over? And, you know, he goes, no, I don't know why. And we're like, well, no, we have, I, I, we have no idea. And he goes, well, you, you didn't turn on your turn signal. And I'm just like, wow, like, over a turn signal. So he goes, takes both of our uh, license, and then he comes back and says, on my side, he comes on my side and says, hey, can I, can you step out of the car? And I go, yeah. And at that point, it was running through my head like, okay, I'm going to jail. I'm for sure going to jail because I have this, they're going to search me and they're going to find it. So the guy's searching me like crazy. Like, when I say he's searching me like crazy, he was doing some, to me, some sexual stuff to me. And I did not like it one bit. And it was really weird. And I, oh, I, that's, that stuff was stupid. And I just wanted to punch him in his face. But he kept grabbing me. When I said grabbing me, he kept grabbing my stuff. So he was grabbing me because one of my buttons were undone. So I have five buttons on this pants or four buttons on this pants. And so he sees one undone. And I'm just like, well, for one, I didn't undo my buttons to shove the weed down there. I just lifted up my pants and shoved it down. And so he goes, well, why do you have it? Why is one of your buttons undone? I said, oh, my fault. And I was like, I don't know. And I go to button back up and he search grabs my whole stuff. And I'm just like, what the freak is going on right now? Like, did he really just grab my stuff right here? And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? And then he goes, he goes, I got a strong odor right here. And I'm like, what? Like, you don't smell nothing, you just think because of the button. But he grabbed, like, 
like he grabs my stuff and I'm just like what is going on right now this this has to be a joke like this guy is really searching me like this he goes I got a strong odor coming right here and he's pointing to where you know down there and I'm just like bro you're tripping right now for one you don't smell anything I I can promise you that but so he's he's checking me he's going through my you know between my legs like like this like I thought I was gonna show you but he keeps going between my legs like this you know searching me and he can't find nothing the guy keeps he he keeps grabbing me you know looking and I'm just like bro this is getting out of hand this is getting weird I don't like this like I'm just hoping he'll just stop because bro you're touching me like what and then so he goes like he you know he's searching me and then he says well this is the weird part about my job so i'm like what is this man about to do it's already getting weird it's already weird like what what is the weird part, part about your job like it's done already got weird i kid you not he gets my pants like this he grabs them where my belt is he pulls it like this and he gets his flashlight and starts going like that. I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me right now. This man pulled my pants like this and flashing his light. There was two cops. He's flashing his light looking for it. He can't find nothing. And at this point, I'm just like, bro, I want to be done with this. I don't care what happens at this point. Like, this man is searching me like crazy, like sexual searching me. Like, bro, quit. And I'm pretty sure he would have kept going, but I'm just like, I just got fed up with it and I said, look, it's under, it's all the way under there and you're not going to find it, but I'll get it for you because I'm tired of you touching me. So he goes, well, I'm going to let your right hand go. You know, I got my hands behind my back and he's got, he goes, I'm going to let your right hand go and grab the weed, we set it on the car, cop car, and then put your hands back behind your back I go okay he's like if you do run we will tase you and I go I'm not gonna run so he does that I grab it throw it on the cop car and he puts me back in handcuffs I got caught guys just just so you know I got caught with two grams so he throws so I you know I threw it on there and then he puts me in the cop car so he puts me in the cop car and I'm like, okay, well, I'm for sure going to jail. But, you know, I was, I had, you know, thoughts going through my head like, okay, I'm going to be fine. Like, he's just going to let me go. It's, it's just two grams. But that was not the case. So I get let out of jail like five hours later. So I only stayed in jail for like five hours. And then he puts me or I go to court the next day at eight in the morning. So I go to court and I'm just like, you know, I don't know what's about to happen. So I just go in there. And then you have 180 days, you know, I'm pro pretty much six months probation. And I go, dang, like this sucks. And so I'm just thinking like, okay, can I go back to Houston? And, you know, everybody's saying, don't, you know, don't go yet. Like, and I came to realize I had to, I have to, I had to take drug and alcohol classes before I could go back. That's why it was taking so long for me to go back because, you know, it was delayed. So I had to take drug and alcohol classes on the 24th and 25th on a Saturday and a Sunday before I could go. And I was like, okay, can I go after this? She goes, yes. Um, yeah, I took the drug and alcohol classes, you know, that was really mind opening to me. And uh, I was just like, okay, like I saw the bigger picture in life basically because my instructor that I had was... He was really good. That that guy was A1 at what he does. Uh, you know, we just went in depth of like drinking alcohol. Like I didn't get caught with alcohol, but I had to, you know, I had to sit there for that too because other people were in it. So drinking alcohol and the weed that he was talking about. So I was just going through that whole thing. So I took the drug and alcohol classes and yet, you know, that was mind opening. And so you know, basically, moral of the story, you know, that was the whole, you know, nine yards of it. And, um, I wish I could go back and <laughs> redo everything, but you can't. You just gotta, uh, 
pretty much learn off of it and you know stuff like that you just <laughs> i just gotta live with it now you know and go through the whole process i really tried to come back as soon as i could but you know i couldn't and at first i didn't want to tell y'all what happened because it's embarrassing for one but you know i just thought y'all should know y'all should really know now what happened because i mean everybody's like when are you going back to houston all of all this and i'm just like you know, I'm just not going, you know, I'm visiting family. And of course, you know, y'all was like visiting family for that long. But, you know, that's what happened. This is, that's what happened. Uh, this is why I didn't go back, didn't come back here for three months. If y'all don't know, I am back in Houston. You know, if you see the room, you know, the room look familiar. But I am with, back in Houston. Um, I'm glad to be back. Glad to that I got through this whole process. Uh, glad to be done with it. So, yeah, I'm back, guys. So, uh, make sure you guys go subscribe. If you guys like this video, smash the like button, please. You know what I'm saying? Leave a comment down below, like I said, in the beginning of the video. Um, yeah, follow my social media. That's coming up next. So, peace out. I love you guys so much. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.